Hello everyone, my name is Valerio Lucky and I work as a research assistant in Institute Pasteur. In this unit, I will give you an overview of wide field microscopy. Wide field uh, microscopy is the more basic and older type of microscopy, yet is still widely used. The most common time, uh, type of wide field is the bright field, where the specimen is illuminated completely by a standard illumination field. This means that contrary to confocal microscopy, we cannot easily decide which part or section of the specimen we want to observe. Later, we will introduce fluorescent microscopy briefly to have a complete outlook of what we can do with wide field microscopy. The most basic yet relevant component of the wide field is the lamp itself. Before the introduction of LED lamp, the most used one were the arc lamp. The arc lamp are mainly divided in mercury lamp and xenon lamp. The mercury lamp has a strong intensity. It covers a broad spectrum, peaking near UV. The xenon lamp has a more even spectrum, but the intensity is lower, and the peak is near the infrared. The arc lamp have a reduced lifespan. 300 hours for the mercury one and 600 hours for xenon. And this lifespan is fortly reduced by switching on and off the lamp. This means that the user has to carefully keep track of the usage of the lamp. Lamp over the lifespan has a risk of exploding and need to be disposed carefully with special procedures. The LED lamp as a broad and stable spectrum, have a far longer lifespan, don't need warm up or cool down time, and can be disposed easily with standard methods. The use of LED lamps is spreading faster with the maturation of this technology and the consequent diminishing of the prices. Another fundamental component of the modern microscopy is the camera. The camera sensor is general, in general as millions of photodiodes that convert the light into electrical currents. The most common semiconductor sensors are the CCD and CMOS uh, that differ only from frame rate, noise to signal ratio and sensitivity. The CCD cameras have a better noise to signal ratio where the CMOS has a higher frame rate. EM, CCD and S CMOS are the scientific evolution of normal cameras. The SGMOS have a poor quality but can go up to 1000 FPS, while the AM CCD are able to capture uh, really dim signals. As always, choosing between one technology or the other depends on the nature of the experiment itself. A sunny sample like cells can be hard to observe using normal bright field. To solve this problem, we can use differential interference contrast, also known as Normansky optics. These techniques use polarized light to illuminate the sample and enhance greatly the contrast. And furthermore, this technique can be combined with fluorescent microscopy, obtaining image with higher contrast and resolution, but at the cost of a reduced uh, light intensity. To use this combination, it's necessary to use two cameras on the microscope, or one camera with a really high frame rate, that can acquire separately the DIAC image and the fluorescent image, and the software will combine it later in a single image. The DIAC method makes use of wall sound prism, um, made of two different materials with different refractive index. This prism split a light wave and uh, elliptically polarized the resulting light waves at 0 and 90 degrees. When this polarized light waves pass through the specimen, the resulting refracted light is composed of two different bright field images. After passing through another prism, the two different uh, refractive indexes interact, and according to the difference in optical path length, they produce interference that enhance uh, bright or dark areas of the specimen itself. At the end, the polarizing filter removes the direct transmitted light 
that was previously polarized at 135 degrees, making the image more visible and with higher contrast. Often it is necessary to observe the tilts of structure inside the specimen itself. And one way to do this is to label a say structure with fluorescent molecules. These molecules are excited by a specific wavelength of light and immediately remit a light of a longer wavelength. In epifluorescent microscopy, the objective acts as a condenser, so it's always well aligned, increasing greatly the quality of the images. The epifluorescence works thanks to the excitation and emission filters. This too and uh, the dichroic mirror that reflects the excitation light and let the emission light proceed this one. The emission light uh, proceed uh, towards uh, the camera and get acquired. Usually all these components are inserted in cubes that can be swapped by some of the wavelength or color we want to observe. Recently, uh, the laser um, that before were confined to technology like confocal microscopy are entering the uh, fluorescent microscopy. This is related to the drop in price and, such, uh, and size of such apparatus. The laser offers a stable focused wavelength that can be optimized and improve the quality of the image itself. To remove the often blurry light uh, around the specimen, uh, more and more deconvolution methods are arising. The deconvolution is a computational method that eliminates the light out of focus, resigning the blurry light to the correct source point, clearing the image. After relatively long exposure to exciting wavelengths, the fluorophores start to fade. In feeding, uh, we put together uh, both quenching, passage of energy from one molecule to the other, and photo bleaching, the disruption of the fluorophore itself, which is irreversible. These two physical characteristics can be used on purpose like uh, infrap, recovery of signal after bleaching, or FRET, resonant illumination after binding but more often are problems that need to be taken into account uh, during the acquisition. When an image starts to fade, uh, the emission intensity gradually decreases. Uh, to fix this, the only way is to plan carefully each part of the experiment, from the fluorescent label to the image acquisition. The wide field microscopy did a huge technological advances in uh, uh, last years and now can rival on resolution and accuracy technologies uh, such as uh, uh, confocal scanning. Uh, now we can use wide field to do super resolution and single molecule imaging using SIM, DSTORM and GSD SIM. With this, we conclude our brief overview about wide field microscopy. In the following subunits, you will encounter more recent technology and you will be able to do a comparison between them. Enjoy!